Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everyone, to be with us uh, this morning. So um, we are going to talk about the way uh, our uh, local uh, Fiber High Hub has uh, developed some uh, tools and methodology uh, based, of course, on NGSILD uh, API, uh, especially to, to address um, the, the, the challenge of uh, designing and using data models and uh, defining also uh, and exposing digital twins uh, capabilities. So that's the, the proposed uh, agenda for, for, for today. Uh, in the first uh, part, I uh, will say a few words about uh, our Fireware High Hub and Fireware High Hub's network and the challenges that we are uh, facing on, on a daily basis. And then um, we will see the, the necessity for us to, to structure the way we use uh, NGSILD uh, in general. And then we will have two uh, separate, uh, let's say, approach. The first one will, with the focus on the, the data model uh, design and how we use it as a common language uh, for, the, for, for the interactions with the, the various uh, stakeholders. And uh, then in the second uh, uh, part of uh, and last part of the, the presentation, we will uh, introduce the way we approach uh, the digital twins uh, concept and how we implement it with uh, NGSI LD uh, using the, the concept of uh, asset administration shell coming from the industry 4.0 uh, platform. So first, uh, a short introduction about the, the Fireware High Hubs uh, network. Uh, so um, it's an important, uh, let's say, activity of uh, within the, the Fireware community uh, because the Fireware iHubs are uh, local organizations uh, with the goal to uh, support uh, uh, regional uh, stakeholders uh, with the adoption of uh, fireware technology. Uh, and currently, uh, there are about uh, 30 fireware high hubs uh, that are uh, implemented all over, uh, everywhere in the world. And um, this net networks uh, is also uh, uh, an important part uh, in um, in the data space uh, business alliance uh, because it's also something that uh, is uh, uh, ongoing with the, with the other uh, organization of the of the DSBA uh, to try to uh, coordinate and better uh, know each other uh, through the, the hubs uh, the hubs network. Uh, so, Fobo Numeric, uh, I represent uh, myself, uh, Fobo Numeric, one of these fireware I have uh, implemented in France, in northern France. And uh, we are uh, uh, an association of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, we act as a digital innovation hub. And uh, through this, uh, these activities, we have to deal with uh, a very, uh, let's say, heterogeneous uh, variety of uh, use cases of uh, stakeholders and uh, also a wide variety of people uh, in several uh, sectors. Uh, private sector, but also uh, we, we also work with uh, local governments uh, and some uh, of our experience also are related in the, the Fireware for City booklet uh, with the city of saint Cotin mainly. Um, and uh, from a technical point of view, we also have to deal with uh, a wide variety of uh, implementation and uh, several uh, uh, of course, uh, technical components uh, coming mainly from the from the fireware uh, community, uh, and we used to implement these uh, uh, these components in several uh, configuration and environments. So for us, it's very uh, uh, also important to leverage this uh, local eng engagement together with our involvement in uh, European projects and European initiative. Uh, we are uh, involved in several uh, uh, 
projects at European level, and especially we we are waiting to be to get involved in the European Digital Innovation Hub network in the coming uh, uh, months. Uh, so for us, it's very important also to uh, to be at the at the forefront of the art uh, regarding the, the technology and the adoption by the um, especially by the SMEs but also by the, the local governments and uh, of course uh, NGSI LD is at the, the is a very important component and a very important asset to structure our uh, activities and uh, it's important for us to find uh, efficient way to 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 interact with the the, the, the several teams that we are working uh, with and also uh, as i said before to to find our, our way in our uh, uh, values implementations and uh, um, also, we need some uh, tools and methodology uh, to introduce uh, in uh, simple uh, ways and language uh, the, the concepts that are used in NGSI early. So that's why we have developed uh, some uh, some tools and some approach uh, that I try to, to summarize in these slides uh, to, to really leverage uh, the, the, the power of uh, NGSI early and the fireware implementations. So one of the, the main important uh, approach uh, regarding the, the, the data models design, of course, just uh, a few words, I put some links uh, also in the slides in reference uh, to, uh, to past Wednesday webinar where you can find some more details about the concepts. So I, I do not go through the, 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 the details, but uh, I really want here to, to give uh, 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 usage point of view and how we uh, we use it uh, on the local basis and on the daily basis. So uh, to come back to the presentation, uh, one of the first uh, important uh, approach for us is to uh, to consider that the the, the 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 data model and then the entity types must really, must, uh, really fit the, the reality. So it means that we try to define one entity type for each kind of assets uh, uh, with this difficulty to uh, identify the uh, an, an homogeneous uh, set of characteristics and of course the the, the challenge is try to is not to be uh, too generic but also not to be uh, too specific um, so it's uh, it's a matter of also experience and knowledge of the of the use case uh, so it has also an impact on the on the definition of the relationships between the entity. Uh, it's also important that these relationships must be uh, relevant and uh, has the capacity to uh, to evolve regarding the the use case. And also, again, what is very important here is to to keep this relationship between the entities as consist as consistent as possible. And uh, a third important uh, and main question is um, the sorry the um, uh, to identify which property that must be uh, temporal. Uh, and of course, here uh, one of the main challenge is to evaluate the size of the history <clears throat> and uh, also the, the relevance uh, regarding the, the temporal data that will be exposed as uh, as a time series. Uh, through uh, through the NGSILD API, and finally, um, uh, the, the the data model um, must really be used as a communication uh, tool. So it must be uh, visible and understandable uh, by uh, non-technical persons uh, that maybe do not know what an API is. Yeah. But uh, the important thing is that they are able to understand the model regarding the use case. And uh, usually these, these people know uh, the, the, the business case and the business process. And it's important that they understand how it's uh, digitalized and virtualized. And uh, here, uh, again, it's really a, a question of, uh, of visualization and uh, capacity to, uh, to communicate around the, the data model in a natural language. So um, 
we have implemented some tools and I'm going to demonstrate it using this first uh, example uh, that uh, is applied in the framework of the i trust uh, project uh, with the, the code to mute uh, experiments uh, involving uh, three, three different uh, SMEs, an Italian one, a Danish one and a French one. And uh, we use um, uh, our tool and our approach to define the, the, um, uh, uh, the data model that we use for the, that will be used for the, the, the data space uh, definition for these experiments. Uh, and these three uh, SMEs has different level of knowledge about uh, NGS, ILD, and FIWARE. And the challenge for us as Digital Innovation Hub is, of course, to make them work to the, together and have a common understanding of the, of the data, data space. And uh, I will use also another example that is more mature and also where reference uh, in the within the fireware community is the the watering uh, uh, automation of the sport fields uh, in the city of saint quentin and here also it's a question of uh, coordinate the, the the efforts of uh, various uh, stakeholders the um, the local government the uh, an sme and uh, global corporate so uh, let's see first the, the example we, we, we have implemented, we are currently implemented um, in the frame of uh, i fortress uh, project with uh, this example of the, uh, the Danish provider uh, called Montem that provides some uh, uh, air quality sensors uh, that of course uh, must publish data uh, on the contact broker. Uh, in the framework of this project, we have uh, initiated uh, a channel uh, on YouTube to, to describe our, uh, our work, so you can uh, also uh, see the, uh, the evolution of the prototyping on YouTube. But here I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to show you uh, what we have done in our tool. I'm trying to change uh my screen sorry for that i do not know how to do that uh i want to change maybe it's here yes okay so that's the the workspace we have defined for the code to mute uh, project here oh sorry i have to log in again so it's down and now I have to go here. So um, again, what is important uh, to start uh, to define the, the, the data model is um, to think about the, the real assets that must be uh, virtualized. And here, to start with a simple example, so uh, as you saw before, we have to implement the, the air quality sensors and of course the measurements uh, that are performed by these air quality sensors. And uh, for this, we use uh, the smart data model uh, as, uh, as a reference. Uh, so if we look at the definition, for instance, of the air quality sensor, First, the definition, we have defined uh, an entity type that is called air quality, uh, air quality sensor. And as a, as, a, as a reference, we use the smart data models uh, repository. Maybe I can show you the smart data models for those who are not so familiar with it. So here it is. So the smart data models is, uh, a repository of data models uh, provided by this uh, network of communities, so uh, including, of course, the, the Fireware uh, Foundation. And uh, using this tool, you can find a wide variety of, uh, of data models, and we can use it. It's a possibility to, to use this as a reference. For instance, here to define a sensor, we use the, the reference model device. 
and thanks to the to this reference to the data model when we uh, uh, define the the property of the um, of the air quality sensor we can pick the properties directly from the ones that have been defined in the reference model of the device uh, provided by the smart data model repository so that's what we've done for uh, to start with the the, the, um, the i4 trust uh, project with especially with uh, the smes that are involved in uh, in Cotomute. and um, also in the in the modeling of the in the design of the data model uh, we have several we have also in this tool um, uh, different categories of uh, entity type it's uh, interesting because then we can also use uh, here what's going on it's it's possible we we can um, uh, for instance if we can, uh, we do not want to see the the models we can hide and filter the representation of the data model without the, the model of the of the sensor if it does not make sense so it's also here it's it's, it's a simple uh, uh, it's a simple model so it's not so relevant so but when it's more complex it can make sense and uh, also an interesting uh, uh, part is here for the, the air quality observed uh, measurement, uh, where we have also have the uh, uh, geo property that is uh, associated to to the air quality observed. So it's also a question uh, that is currently uh, inside the the, the co um, experiment, where we we put this information, for instance, of the geolocation. Is it at the recording level or is it at the, um, the device level? Probably it's both, or it can be also in the relationship itself. So it's still a, a discussion that we have to choose. Uh, probably from this uh, model and in the perspective to publish uh, the, the information of on a, on a data space, it's uh, more rele it's relevant at least to put it in the um, in the air quality observed. So the the recording where we have the, the time series uh, registered for the um, for the air quality observed. Uh, yes, just to illustrate that in these uh, entities, they are uh, as they use um, the uh, the geo property. Of course, it's easy to 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 localize these entities on the map, and uh, um, uh, also here we can see the details of the. Oh, here it does not work um but uh, normally you should see the, the details of an entity uh here we just started with the workspace so maybe there are still some uh, settings that are missing but I, i'm going to directly show a more mature uh, environment in the city of saint quentin so here you see um the model is uh, is more complex so it's also possible to define groups of uh uh, or subgroups within the within the, the data model and what is important also is to visualize the, the relationships uh, because then for an end user it's easier to also to navigate uh, through the entities especially when we have this kind of uh, uh, uh complex uh, complex data model uh for for the users it's very important to to have the possibility to uh see what we are talking about so here for instance uh, for the watering uh, use case we have the city uh, in city in the city we have several stadiums in within some of the stadiums there are several fields etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, maybe i can uh, then uh, show the list of the fields here uh, I know that there are some activities uh, on these fields. And then here I can navigate. So here I, I am, uh, I have opened a specific entity representing uh, a football field with all the, the properties and the values of the, the properties. And what is interesting here, because we have defined and precising and precise the 
the relationship definition, it's possible to navigate from one entity to the related and uh, the, the, the other entities that have relationships with these entities. And especially if I want to go to the field uh, operations, uh, here I have the, the recording of the of the of this um, of this field but here i miss one i think so i, so I would do the stadium uh, definition sorry for that uh, oh yes i did not take the one the right one i wanted to go on this stadium and uh, okay so here in this stadium i see that there are two fields so that's the main uh, the main football field as i said before and uh, here are the field records uh, okay and just what i wanted to see is that on this uh, field record currently there is one measurement that is performed which is the soil moisture so there are some uh, uh, sensors that are in installed on this field and uh, we have defined this soil moisture as a temporal uh, property so of course it's also important to have an access a direct access to the raw value the temporal value that has been uh, collected and as i said before it's uh, it's always uh, a discussion if the if it's relevant to have a property uh, defined as a temporal property uh, especially related to, to the frequency where you where you collect uh, the, the information so here for in this case it's uh, i think uh, each uh, every hour the that we measure the the value so it's not so uh, frequent so it's relevant and it's possible to 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 define this one as a temporal value so that's the the basic uh, principle that we apply to define our uh, our um, uh, data model with uh, with uh, different uh, uh, stakeholders and different level of interest and uh, involvement in the in the in the project. So now we can go to the next uh, level. So I go back to the property to the presentation. Sorry here yes it works so so that's it for the uh the data model yes that was some screenshots and now on the the, the this second part uh, of, the, of the webinar uh i would like to to share with you our approach to uh, implement the, the this concept of digital twin and uh, through the, this set of uh, capabilities that has been uh, uh, described uh, in the Platform Industry 4.0 uh, initiative, uh, especially through the, um, the administration shell concept. Again, I put, I put here in this slide the reference to a past Wednesday webinar uh, where these concepts are described in, uh, in more with more details. Uh, so the concept of digital twin, the concept of uh, administration shell is present in, is, is in this uh, uh, webinar, among others, but this one is, uh, I think, uh, very um, uh, good to, to have a first uh, introduction. So I invite you, of course, to, to, uh, to visit, to, to, uh, to check out this, uh, this video if you want to have more details. But um, what we have used um, mainly in our approach is this concept of administration shell and the possibility to combine uh, the, the different uh, administration shell. So um, uh, again, based on uh, real assets uh, that are available uh, for, for, for a given uh, use case. And uh, we implemented it, of course, uh, based on NGSILD API. Based on what we've just seen before, what we call the, the passive uh, part, which is the representation of the, the asset feature. And oh, this, uh, this presentation is, of course, based on the uh, entity type 
uh, modeling representing the data model and the entities that are, uh, let's say, instances of this uh, data model and entities and relationship, of course. And we have uh, implemented the active part of the administration shell uh, to, to manage the interaction uh, of uh, the external world or the, or, or the, of the partners uh, with, um, with the, 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 the digitalized assets. And uh, here, the, one of the main concepts is, is the concept of capability and routing that uh, can be combined uh, to, uh, to interact. And the, the concept of capability is mainly implementing rules and constraints to describe what is possible to do with, uh, with a given entity type. And uh, the, the routing concept is uh, a scenario combining the capabilities and that is applied to uh, a given set of entities. And of course, we have the two level. We have the, the definition level and uh, we have the execution level, especially for, for the routing, uh, implementing the, well, interacting with the, the capabilities and the, the entities. Um, so that's what we uh, done. And as an example, uh, again, uh, I'm going to take an example from a European uh, project called uh, DIH Squared, where we have started to work with uh, another French uh, digital innovation hub that has a focus on robotics. And this is called uh, Proxinov. Uh, they have several uh, uh, robotic cells uh, that uh, they use to, to implement um, uh, industrial use case for, for their customers, for their, uh, their partners. And uh, the challenge also for the IH squared is to um, uh, find uh, uh, tools and methodology again to have this approach of uh, agile configuration and, uh, or, or, and coordination, coordination of the industrial uh, uh, equipments. So uh, we have used this uh, concept of um, of uh, administration shell again to implement it, and we have used a, a 3D uh, representation also to simulate uh, what we've done before applying this really with uh, the proxy of uh, assets. Uh, so maybe Pierre, you can show your screen. Pierre, my colleague, will show uh, will show the demo. Then I can comment. So uh, in this app, uh, of course. Yes, Priya, it's, uh, we can see your, your screen. Um, so this um, uh, robot is a representation and is the visualization of uh, NGSI LD entities, the very simple entity uh, with, uh, the, 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 with properties describing the, the position of each uh, joint of the, the robot. And we have defined some capabilities uh, to uh, to specify how and what how it's possible to uh, to interact with the with each uh, joint of the robots. So Pierre, maybe you can uh, uh, see just show um, yes some movements of the robots, and then I will uh, I will show uh, what is going on on the on the definition on NGSIRD. So here you see that uh, Pierre is uh, changing uh, some values of the, of, the, of the entity property. And then uh, uh, these values are changed on the context broker and a notification is sent to the, the 3D model in order to, uh, to execute what is requested by the uh, uh, by the by the user, so that's the the raw usage of the capability. We have also uh, defined uh, the possibility to use um, not read uh, scripts. So maybe Pierre, you can also just show us a simple uh, not read uh, uh, script on the robot. I see you are already ready for, for the next uh, demo. <laughs> so, okay, so here we have the combination of two 
um, uh, execution of um, of a capability. And here you see that we have defined in Node Red uh, that um, uh, some nodes that uh, represent a capability that is defined above the above the the NGSI LD entity. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, to show you what's going on in the, uh, sorry, in the, uh, on the context broker, uh, yes, here. Yes, I'm back. Uh, so I'm going to use another workspace, which is the capabilities uh, for the robots here. And we are talking about this representation of the robot. So as I said before, you see here we have a very simple entity with uh, the six, uh, yes, the, the six join represented by their, uh, let's say, the, 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 the properties is just giving the, uh, the angle of the motor that is controlling the joint. Uh, we have defined the, this as uh, also uh, temporal property. So we have the, the history of the of the movements. And uh, uh, what is new here is that on the data model, we have this concept. Of, we have implemented this concept of administration shell in a very simple way uh, because you see that uh, here, for instance, we have only one capability, uh, and we described for each in this capability called motors angle for each uh, property. So for each motor, we have uh, defined them as control property and each control property defines, uh, specify uh, what is the possibility, uh, the, the, uh, well, the allowed, the allowed, sorry, the allowed value uh, for, this, uh, for this specific motor. So for instance, for the first motor, it's possible to uh, position it uh, between uh, minus 180 uh, degrees and plus 180 degrees with an increment of one degree. Uh, so that's for the, the first motor. Uh, just to give another example, but it's exactly the same. The, uh, another motor has over uh, uh, possible value. And uh, based on the definition that are also um, uh, NGSI LD entity, we have defined a specific API, uh, generic API that is able to take it into account this parameter to interact with, um, uh, with the, the, uh, the entity representation uh, based on the data model that we, we've seen uh, before. Um, so, uh, I'll go back to the presentation now to introduce the last demo. Uh, I have to switch here. Uh, yes, it's there. Okay. So to finish uh, this uh, this demo and this uh, this part of the, the presentation, now we are going to. Uh, to demonstrate the, the, the same principle that I introduced before uh, for uh, a prototype that we have uh, done for the, the city of Vienna. We have uh, Xavier here with us. Maybe Xavier, you can uh, uh, open your microphone and camera to introduce yourself and uh, the challenges in the city of Vienna. Yes, gladly. Thanks a lot. Um, my name is Xavier Pfaffenbichler. I'm from the city of Vienna. And um, in 2019, the Fiverr Foundation launched the idea of a Fiverr board. So various cities in Europe that use Fiverr have an 8280 model made of Lego bricks to bring smart city aspects closer to trade fairs or events. And the idea is to, uh, the Fiverr modules can be put together by common standards by anyone as needed for the use case, almost like Lego bricks in the real world. So with real Lego bricks, it can be presented in a simple and understandable way. 
Last year, the Safate for Cities virtual head Carton was launched. So with challenges from Brussels, Berlin, and Vienna. The last challenge from Berlin is in its final stages right now. Part of the Vienna challenge was um, the use of multilingualism and the connection to the Smart City Vienna, Vienna module, uh, powered by Fireware and built with Lego bricks. One of the controllable parts is the Ferris wheel. So with that, I'll hand over to you, Vincent, again. Thank you, Xavier. So uh, regarding the, this, um, this possibility to really um, interact with uh, the Lego model, we have applied the, the same concept uh, that I've uh, presented before. So this concept of uh, uh, administration shell and um, uh, capabilities definition. So uh, I'm going to share my screen again just to show you how it has been implemented in the uh, Here again. So again, we have uh, defined a very uh, simple entity representing uh, the Ferris wheel with uh, mainly one, well, sorry, two uh, properties. The, the most uh, important one is the spin duration uh, that uh, we represent the, in seconds the duration where uh, that must um, that we want the, the, the wheel to, to turn. And uh, we have also another uh, property, which is the user message. So we offer the, the possibility uh, for the users to, to leave uh, some feedback about the usage. And of course, they have been defined as, uh, as temporal uh, property. So we see that we have already made some uh, some tests here, um, also for the uh, for the messages. Okay, so and about this uh, uh, this entity, we have defined also uh, an administration shell with uh, two capabilities: the capability to 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 spin, so to turn the um, uh, the, the wheel, and to provide some feedback. And also what is important here is that uh, inside the, um, the administration shell, we have the, the possibility to describe, uh, of course, in natural language, uh, what is the, the purpose of this uh, capability. And it's also something that is available, of course, to the, the API uh, to, to define the, the, uh, some user interface and user uh, application. Um, so I think it's time also for a, a live demo. So maybe Pierre, you can share your screen again, and I hope we can see also uh, Xavier uh, webcam. Then we can see the real model and uh, the 3D model turning all together. So in this app, uh, maybe first you can show the info uh, section, uh, Pierre. Uh, so in this information section, the, the, the capabilities of the asset uh, is uh, presenting. Also, of course, uh, leveraging the NGS ILD API. And uh, also we use, uh, so we can go now for the, um, uh, the control uh, panel uh, where we use the, we have the possibility to activate uh, the, the capability. So here we have, maybe you can share, see, yes, uh, show, sorry, that we have two different, uh, we see the two different capabilities, the capability, yes. And uh, the most interesting one is the spin one. So maybe you can make it turn and you, we should see on Xavier's uh, screen that the Lego wheel is also going to start to turn, yes at the same time than the uh, 3D model representation. So that's uh, for to, to illustrate, um, uh, that's based on the AGSI LD API. In this case, the, the Ferris wheel uh, entity is updated and a notification is sent both to the Lego model and also to the 3D representation of the model. So we have two uh, uh, subscription that has been defined in NGSILD to send notification to, to the two different uh, 
uh, representation of the Ferris wheel. Uh, and as Pierre showed, of course, we have also this possibility to trigger uh, the update of the of the Ferris wheel uh, status through uh, node rate. So that's it for the for the demo. Uh, we can see that it works fine. We can see the Lego model turning. I hope you see it also uh, from your from your screen. I think we are ready for the the Q and A session. I hope it was uh, interesting for you. Uh, again, uh, it's the, 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 our goal was to share um, our experience as Digital Innovation Hub. We have uh, showed some uh, some tools and methodology that we would like also to share with all uh, interested uh, uh, stakeholders if it's relevant for you. So we really would be happy to hear your question, uh, remarks, or any kind of comments.